been gone four weeks. I'm sick. I'm pissed off. What? What was that? Oh, oh, okay. You didn't miss me? Well, I learned how to customize in four weeks. You don't know how to customize? You're a dork. you how to customize here today, all right? You gotta learn from me. No one else. Me. I'm the man with the respect. Don't forget it, ever. I'm gonna teach you how to customize and paint your dang action figures of wrestling. I got you. I got you. Calm down. Get off your couch right now, your chair, your bed. I see you laying down over there. Put that snack away. Get up, go to the store. I don't care what you have to do, bro. Go in your freaking boots. Go to the store, buy a paintbrush. Go to the store, buy some paint, and go to Walmart while you're at it. Get yourself a freaking basic body root. All right? Do it, right now. And then, what you're gonna do is, when you come home, you're gonna get your Wi-Fi, all right? You're gonna watch this video. Then you're gonna paint that Bobby Root. All right, dude? All right. Now, let's learn how to customize. All jokes aside, guys, I'm so happy to be back. I'm sorry I had to take a break. Just my mind was not in the right place. And also, I wasn't really happy with my content. I just kept uploading the pig fed. And as much as I love it, but like, Jesus Christ, I miss the videos. And like, not the pig fed, I, I don't know. I just prefer my videos. But anyways, I hope today I'm gonna teach you how to customize. It's a very, very stupid title. But like, what else can I call it, dude? I mean, we're gonna be painting figures. So we're gonna paint some figures here today and I hope I'm gonna be able to teach you some new techniques, some new stuff to customize your figures. I'm gonna show you everything I use, my paint brushes, my paint, my freaking sealer, anything and everything you need to know. Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure to smack a like on this video if I helped you out. Make sure to also subscribe to join the family as we're almost at 10K, bro. My biggest dream in my life is 10K. So if we can get 10K, bro, I'm gonna be a happy event of mine. Anyways, guys, I hope today I can teach you how to customize and inspire you and just overall entertain you and teach you something new. So even if you're, and also another thing, I really hope like some experienced customizers watch this and take a little technique from it. That'd be so cool. Anyways guys, I hope you guys enjoy and now let's wait for my Finn Balor. God damn it, ringside. Lately I've been so lonely and Jump. It is Venomine Fix here, and today we are here hitting your subscription box with a very special video. In today's video, it is going to be my first video. Um, and if you don't know, I have started to do customs. I'm completely inspired by BEW, Mahami G, my boy. I'm inspired by him to do customs, and I really wanted to make a video on what I do to make my customs, how to make them like look a little bit presentable and all that kind of stuff. Because I get a lot of questions on what I do, what paint I use, how do I do it, how are you so good when you just started. Now, I don't think I'm good at all. I really don't think I'm good. But if you think I'm good, I'm gonna tell you in this video how I do it. And of course, my goal here is to entertain, inspire, and I want more customizers in this community because this community is very small, especially with customizing. People aren't confident confident enough to do it or well, I wasn't even confident enough to do it but I pulled the trigger and it's working out pretty well I think I'm doing pretty good but I'm still not a plus I'm not like a B like B B B plus something like that but I hope I can help you guys get that motivation to do them because it's really not that hard if you have the patience and the right things and I'm gonna show everything you need in today's video we are making a new Japan Prince Devitt and yes, I am going to make this it is not too really hard. It's not really that hard I'm still trying to find some better pictures of the kick pads, but I think I got a general idea So I'm really excited to make this so far. Um, I've already acetoned the kick pads So as you can see these are elite 40 Tyson kid kick pads It had the designs on it and I got rid of it with some nail polish remover Which I'll show the brand I'm using so this is the acetone I use 
I'm gonna cover this because I don't know why it's so shiny, but I got this at Walmart. It's in like the makeup section. I know it's for girls, but it works for figures. I need also some Q-tips. You use these to clean your ears. I don't even know. I'm not very smart. So you just need these. And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna get your Q-tip and you don't wanna get too much acetone because if you do, then it's become shiny. I can show you from like a top use. It's like water, it's like very clear. So you stick your Q-tip in about like all the way. As you can see, it's wet. So what I do is, and then you wanna close the thing. What I do, I get another tissue and I tap it. And as you can see, if you look closely, I don't really know. You can see the acetone starting to come out. And I don't wanna put too much acetone because then it becomes really bad. But getting it from this angle, then all you have to do is wipe. And look, it's gone. And you have to use many Q-tips because it'll get dirty. And then if you keep rubbing with it, it'll become like this. So you don't want that. So always use like fresh Q-tips. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about wasting Q-tips. You want this to look good. If you want it to look not good in my eyes, then, then go ahead and use dirty ones. But I would never use dirty Q-tips because that is just nasty. As you can see, we can already see some results happening. Look at that. Already getting out of the way. It looks really good so far. So we went from this to so far this, making it look like he doesn't have a beard. We're gonna be getting rid of this whole figure. I'm gonna be doing this right now. I'll record right after I am done with that. All right, guys, here is the result. As you can see, there's not too many spots that are insane and this looks a lot better this is a young finn balor right here and i am a huge fan of this head skin weird seeing this head skin without a beard so it's really interesting to see it so that's really cool huh about time all right so in here is the custom that we're gonna be making here today we got three figures in here because i ordered a couple two other things but in here is the ringside exclusive finn balor so we can make this prince devitt let's get this open all right now getting this thing open oh snap i see the first thing who wants to walk with that of mine there we go we got the elite 60 Al newspaper god damn it but Damn, bro, this looks amazing, but ringside, what? Why is it so dirty? Looks like someone freaking put this in a mud and then brought it, why? Oh, okay. So there was that, a dirty Elias, interesting. Then we got the Elite 57 Baron Corbin. I got this because of the, my Elite 50 Baron Corbin. The knees are super loose and these have different knees. So I definitely want to check that out. And I love that head skin, I never had that. Then I never also had a blue money in the bank. So a lot of new stuff coming in with this one. Elite 57 never even hit my stores. So that's pathetic. But the main thing that we are looking at here today is the ringside exclusive Finn Balor. Cause of course we're making a Prince Devitt. As you can see, there is a dot on that. So good thing we're gonna be swapping that head, but really excited. Let's get this thing open. Hopefully everything's gonna be okay with it. All right guys, just open up this ringside exclusive Finn Balor. Everything is okay with it. I don't know if it rattles, but it might have a little bit, but it doesn't really matter to me right now. But anyways, we are gonna definitely be part swapping this bad boy because remember we're gonna be putting some arms onto this as you can see We're gonna be putting those arms. I'm guessing this is an Ambrose. Not sure what arm this is Then we're gonna be putting our acetone Finn Balor NXT head scan as you can see already Ooh, I can already kind of see it. So there's that then we're gonna be uh, swapping the calf and we're gonna be putting these Tyson Kid kick pads, as you can see, so just to save some time so I don't have to paint this. And also, just so when I paint this, it doesn't chip like over time. So this is just perfect, acetone and everything. So we're gonna be knee swapping that. And this one hurts me too, guys. Don't think I'm happy about this, but this is actually gonna be for a future custom. We got a fodder Elite Neville. We'll be taking off these kick pads and putting these open knee pads onto this. So a lot of stuff to swap here today. And we're gonna be doing that. I'm gonna show the whole process. And I hope, again, I'm just here to inspire, bro. So hopefully you guys can learn a little something. So let's get all these to swapping. All right, guys, we're gonna first do the hardest part. In my opinion, for me, it's a little difficult. I'm gonna be swapping these calves, as you can see. But anyways, you're gonna need some pliers because you're gonna clip these together. I'll show you, I'll show you the way. Okay, 
I don't mind get out of here, bro. That was like totally like beginning of 2018. Anyways, let's heat this thing up and let's do the hardest part for me. Okay, so this is an awkward angle, I know. So you can also use hot water, but I use a blow dryer. And so as you can see, it's super hot. So what we're gonna do is, it, it might be hard to see. We're gonna peel this back. So like that, it came right out, dude. And so then the peg, as you can see, it's stuck in there. We're gonna take that out. I just put this to the side. If I need the peg, I'll use it later. And then we're gonna slide the knee pad out. So that was that, so I was taking that. So that's what we have so far. Then same thing with the other one, peel it back all the way, and then just take it right out. It comes like smooth as butter, dude. So I think I just lost that peg, so I don't even know where it went. So there's that. So we have this, and then now we need these ones, so we're gonna be taking these out which is super simple once you get the hang of it. So as you can see, just peel it back, smooth as butter when you really have it heating up. Um, so this is a weird one. Okay, so now that we have these kick pads out and we have the Bowler figure, so you need to, of course, cause I've done this, like I've mistakenly did this. We're gonna be sliding this in. So as you can see, we slid it in like, it, like, like this. We slid it in and then you're gonna need the pen. So I'm gonna be using this peg, and we need to stick it through about halfway. I'll show you, but I gotta heat this thing up again, um, this part. We need to heat up this part so it can go through as you can, actually might even be able to go through. Let's see, you, this is so hard, dude. You get the peg, and then you wanna get the smaller side because it's just easier, and you wanna just force it halfway through. This does hurt your thumb, so just be careful. All right, there we go. So as you can see, the peg is in halfway. And then all you'll have to do is just, of course, you have to align it. And so right there, I'm gonna align it right up in here. So I aligned it, and now we're gonna heat this up again so it can be hot. We get our pliers, and then we just whoop, we click it. So super simple, I'm gonna be doing that right now. So give me like, okay. So now I just heat these bad boys up, as you can see, super rubbery. Now what we wanna do, and you wanna do it quick with a blow dryer especially, I'm gonna line this up, stick it through like this. Then I'm gonna get my pliers, and I got these from Walmart if you're wondering. I'm gonna go like this onto, it's hard to show, really. I'm gonna go like this, and then we're just gonna clip it right through. And so it's not gonna be in the shot right now because I really wanna get this in first try and just force it through like this so I'm holding it pretty tight. And there it is. It's going right through both sides. This side, sometimes you gotta push it just a little more just so it can get in all the way. But as you can see, now this Finn Balor, and I know skin tone doesn't match, but the knee pad will cover that. Um, it has white kick pads. We're gonna swap these onto this. So let's do that real quick, and I'll see you once I do that. So as you can see already, that is how it looks. Okay, we are right here, and so I'm gonna show you everything I do. Number one, we use this type of tape. I use this tape because number one, it doesn't leave any marks when you take it off. And also, as you can see, this is how I do it right here. Just because no one's perfect in life, remember that. Um, when I paint, I don't wanna really get it on the like body. If you're wondering what paintbrushes I use, which Take a screenshot if you have to. I use this type of paintbrush. This is the same one that BEW uses and um, Dropkick underscore Customs. They use these and I recommend them like crazy. These are fantastic. I got this at a store called Joanne, so I don't know if you have one of those. A toothpick is always helpful if you need to mix colors. It's just a lot easier, so that's for that. Then I got a little foam cup, really not worth much, so I don't wanna use like cups that are a little more pricey. I just put water in that. My sealer that I use is this one. Again, same one that BEW uses right there. So if you wanna take a screenshot of that. I'm sorry if my hands are shaky, by the way. Um, And then, so there's the knee pads we're gonna be painting very soon. I got this Valor figure just so I know the back because the same kind of design goes for uh, this Balor, I don't know how really to explain it. I got a little paper plate and this is where I put my paints in it. So my paints that I use is folk art. Now, I heard a lot of stuff like folk art's not good. I use it and it's not bad. The white is not the best kind, so I don't really recommend the white, but I do recommend the paint. I don't know, I've been okay with it for the majority. I've been using it for all my customs. It's all been working out, so I would recommend folk art. I'm using cobalt blue 
and make sure it's acrylic if you can find it in the color that you need. For paint brushes, I have my sealer brush, so I just get a paint brush I don't care about. This is a size four if you're wondering. I use the uh, size two flat, as you can see. This is good for the types, as like, just like that. Then the main thing, which is like literally you're gonna be your best friend when doing customs, is your liner. And this is always necessary, and again, like I said, your best friend. It's a super fine brush, but god dang does it do good details if you can really get it. So definitely I recommend this for your brushes. So that is for brushes. And then right now we're gonna be putting the paint inside here and we're gonna start painting and I'll show you some technique. So the first thing I wanna do, cause since it's dry, I wanna put this in the water, dip it a little bit, get my uh, tissue and then just pinch it like this and then go up just so all the extra water comes out so I don't do watercolor. So then you just wanna like, you know, make sure it's good, but you don't wanna do it right away cause it might be a little wet. So always try to practice first when doing it. So as you can see, there's the blue and then I'm just gonna practice a little bit on the plate so I can make sure that it's a good shade and it looks good to me. So definitely I do wanna continue with this one. So there's a little bit of paint right there and I do a lot of dry brushing. I don't really, after I use every paint, I don't dip it in, it's just, a lot of work and I find dry brushing to be a little more easier. So you wanna dip your brush, now this is a good question that I get a lot. So you wanna dip your brush about halfway. So as you can see, that's about halfway. I take it out, it is like a glob, but you have to flatten it out. So here we go, here's the part. So there you go right here and then we just rub it like this. And then we just make it and spread it out until it's becomes really good. So just keep spreading it out. Make sure it's clean over time. I know right now it does not look good, but we have to do layers, so it will take a little bit. And so there we go. As you can see, we flatten it out. It looks clean. I like how it looks, but we also have a little more paint on the other side, so we're just gonna rub that. There we go. So we got this so far. Looks pretty good. And I'm gonna see you guys once I get this whole thing with blue. 40 minutes later, and the whole thing is covered with blue. The knee pads. And again, same thing. Dip it about halfway. And then we have this much. Then we're just gonna evenly go and just, you know, just flatten it out, smear it. On knee pad, done. Looks really good. Gotta put this on very soon after it dries, but we still have this one left. We're gonna be painting this one, and then the knee pads will be done. All that there is left on the knee pads is a little small line detail, which I will do, and then it will just leave the kick pads, and then a little bit on the thumb. There's a little more wrist tape on the thumb, and that's it. All right, guys. Here is how our Finn Balor is looking. All right, so using liner is a very simple thing. However, your the tip of the brush must always be pointy because of course liner. So we want to dip it in the like water for just like just about to the like actual brush. Then what I do is I get the brush and I swirl it in the tissue. So it gets a little bit like this. It looks a little weird because, you know, it's a little weird. But this one's a little nasty and I'll show you what we do. We get this brush and you have to put it in your mouth and swirl it so it becomes pointy, I'll show you. And if you can see this, it's a it won't focus because life, but as you can see, it is a lot more pointier. So you do have to put this thing in your mouth, but right now, let's do the detail. All right, so now using liner, always shake your paints because sometimes they are a little watery. If you dip it too much, it's gonna become too thick. If you dip it too little, it won't be too shown. You have to dip it just enough, and so I think about, about that much. About that much is pretty good in my eyes. So what we're gonna do is, and again, this is gonna be pretty hard to show on camera as I want this to look good. So I'm gonna start with how the knee pad was. Okay, 
then I'll right now clean this thing up. But this is how the knee pad looks. There we go. Both knee pads are complete. My main priority right now is this, to get the triangles on the back. Um, you know, it's the same technique as I showed with the trunks. We can do a little bit, but I definitely need to have 100% focus with this. So again, we're gonna dip our brush. I'm gonna move my damn hand out of the way. We're gonna dip this about halfway, as you can see, the paint. Then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have this as reference right next to me. We're gonna make sure this is held properly. Uh, I wouldn't hold it this way whatsoever, but since I need it to be a triangle, I'm probably gonna stop. I usually do my marks. So I'm gonna start from right here, as you can see. Start about right there. My triangle needs to be somewhere about like this big, I would say. About that big. The point, I would say, would stop right here. I think that's perfect. So as you can see, I put some markings right there so that the triangle will come out that far. It will hit the point right there. Ladies and gentlemen, three hours later, we have finished our New Japan Pro Wrestling and JPW Prince Devitt and god dang did this thing take forever I mean I am so proud of it we are not done yet ladies and gentlemen I have to teach you how to seal and I'm not the best at it myself and again with customs they are not playable do not play and put this figure like through a table. Like it will chip even with sealer because I'm still learning. But I will show you how it works and let's seal this bad boy up. The custom will be complete. When sealing figures, you never want to use a paintbrush that you always use. You want to use a paintbrush that you don't care for. And this right here is a paintbrush that I don't even really care for at all. So. You want to always, because when this sealer hardens up on the, like, fur, I guess, or, like, the little hairs, it, like, is, like, a solid rock. Like, dude, it's pretty damn rough. And also, another thing, when you are using sealer, do not dip your, this brush into, like, this type of water. Because if you dip this brush with sealer on that water, you are going to literally get a bunch of, like blue dots with this kind of stuff. Cause when you put the paint, there's still paint in there. So it gets on the brush and when you keep rubbing it, you're, it's gonna be really messy. So just leave the sealer on there and wash it with hot water, which I will show you. So what we wanna do is, I mean, I just usually don't, I don't put this on like a plate or anything. I just straight up from the cap, it's white. It's like, okay, there's the figure, it's probably broke, no, I'm kidding. But, so it's completely white, but when you put it on the figure, it turns clear, and I will show you that. So let's move this out of the way. So when doing this, I usually dip the whole thing in, and then I just rub it on the, like, by the cap, just so I don't have to worry about it. I would rather put the arms up so I don't get any sealer anywhere else. So that's about the sealer right there. And again, it is gonna be white, and I didn't know this at first when I first started sealing. It's gonna be white, but, after like not even like five minutes, like two, three minutes, it will become clear. So as you can see already, this is how it works. And see, there are gonna be a little bit of chunks because there are some left. I should have cleaned this. So always make sure your paintbrushes are clean when doing this type of stuff. And you don't have to worry about like um, anything. You can just keep going with it, get it done very quickly. You know, just rub it. It turns white, but then as it goes, it does like, become clear well guys this was that mind figs teaching you how to customize your wwe action figures do not be afraid to do it it is a lot of fun but with patience and practice you will get it do not give up when you first do it no one is perfect when they first do it so do not give up and put yourself down about it that is something that i'm still learning to this day but i'm super super proud of this 
New Japan Finn Balor, or Prince Devitt, I should say. This is an amazing figure, and I'm very proud of myself for even making it. Honestly, I would not have been able to do any of this without BEW inspiring me. Seriously, BEW is my main inspiration for this whole thing, and so I want to huge shout out and biggest thank you to him honestly so hope you guys have enjoyed this video if you have make sure to smack a like if this video helped you guys out and gave you that confidence to just do customs because this whole purpose of this video is to inspire and also to help and bring new people who want to customize their figures I want more customizers in this community because what I love about this community is the creativity and so definitely I want to see more customizers. If this video helped you out, leave a like. Make sure to subscribe to join the family. I hope you guys enjoyed and I hope this video really did help you out. I hope to see you in the next video. Venomine Figs is back. I took a little break, but I am back. Peace out, guys.